unique baby bowsers. So this is something that's really interesting when you think about it. But you all know about baby bowser, you know, he's in here with regular bowser, it's whatever. But in Bowser Land, there are more baby bowsers, different unique looking ones that we've never seen again like this, and apparently it applies to baby bowser as a species or something, maybe they're siblings, and it's really weird that he's called baby bowser. But you see this red one that runs a shop, and you know, there's also this blue one with the molecule, I actually think the red one is in the bank. But yeah, it's interesting, and yeah, I don't know, I guess these might have just been the original Koopa Kids, like before we saw them like that in the GameCube. It's neat. Character item preferences. So this is something that might apply to one too, but apparently, according to some sources, like I believe some manuals, the characters have items that they prefer to get, and you might notice this in-game, like the most famous one is Luigi and his skeleton keys, uh, Luigi and his damn skeleton keys, you can't get enough of them. Always go for these, usually in the shop, even if it's not the most, like, good strategic thing, and I think apparently also DK loves Bowser suits, and I think he might even go for the Bowser bomb more often, which is really silly and dumb, and... Yeah, and I believe they also, before in another game where this one too, had the characters perform differently in certain minigames like DK doing modern battles, but yeah. Playing against Toad and Baby Bowser. So this refers to that no good nasty minigame coaster again, being that uh, at the end of normal, I believe, before you face against the Rainbow Run, you have to play Swat Card Derby against Toad. Yeah, that's right, it's a unique character that you play against in a mini game, and likewise, bringing back the baby bowsers again, at the end of hard mode before you unlock that amazing car mini game, you have to play tread carefully against three other baby bowsers, and I guess it's the three that we've been talking about, and yeah, they also have extended health bars, and there's some other oddities of this, but we'll go for those later also. Big Boo. So I kind of debated whether or not to put this in the iceberg, but I decided to and have it at more towards the top just because it's so interesting and such a cool unique thing that I didn't even know about before two pieces of how cumbersome it is to get to it, but I'm pretty sure most know about it at this point, being that in Horror Land, you all know about the normal boos and how there's more of them than usual in there at nighttime, but there's also a big boo, and to get to him, it has to be nighttime. And you need a skeleton key, and you need to be on the path that leads to it, and you need to get far enough to get to the space with the big boo. And even though that's there in the first place, and be curious enough to try that, all while it's nighttime, you have to do it all before it's daytime and be there at night. But once you get to him, you can pay for him to steal coins from all the players. I believe it's 50 that you have to pay, rather than it being free or whatever, 5 coins or whatever. Or... You know how Boo steals a star for one 50 coin payment? Well, Big Boo can take three stars, one from each of the players for 150 coins. Probably worth it. Yeah, it's really insane and wild. Western Land Japanese ending. This is a regional change that I'm sure most have heard about being that in the Japanese version, it's more clear that they're using actual guns. But in uh, the international release, they changed it so they see corks fly off them, making it more like just a toy gun. Koopa Bank coin stack. So this is something that I put on here kind of for myself. Um, some might think that's kind of silly that it's on here at all, but I didn't notice this detail for a long time. I thought it was pretty cool being that I noticed that there's a pile of yellow coins around the Koopa Bank, and it seems to be changing all the time and sometimes it's not there at all and just says coin or whatever on it and again i might be kind of dumb but i just didn't realize for the longest time that this coin tag changes depending on how many coins are in the bank with it getting bigger as there's more coins in the bank and that clears up when there's zero no game so this is something that's present in all three of the mario parties on n64 and it's something that you can only access through hacking and such but it it has a unique thing where the player's spaces will turn yellow. Again, I believe there's no way to trigger this in the uh, final version of the game, I know what it means. But all the character spaces will be yellow, which is unique to this. And rather than playing a minigame at the end, it'll instead just say no game, and it'll just 
immediately go to the next turn. Yeah, kind of interesting mechanic that they could have included. Most believe that was maybe just there for developers to test the games and not have a mini game constantly interrupt each turn. Picker item. This is an unused item in the game, and it's believed that it would be whichever player used this item would be able to pick the mini game that you play at the end of the turn, which I think is kind of cool. I mean, it's not that busted sounding. I mean, obviously it's geared towards you picking mini game that you like, but I mean, again, it's not that insane i think i don't know i guess i kind of see why they got rid of it because it's kind of too complex and stuff and who knows how many choices there would be and how that process would go but yeah i don't know i think it would be kind of cool to see it restoring some sort of like definitive mario party remix 64 mod bowser bank taking a star so Bowser Land, of course, works differently, where a lot of things are kind of like bent around in reverse, and one of them being that the bank works opposite that does in all the other boards, being that when you pass it, they actually give you coins, then when you land on it, you have to pay how many coins they've given away to everybody, and yeah, it's really punishing to land on there. But if you land, there are no coins, then you'll get this rant of the baby Bowser going like, I'll sue you, I'll sue you, you hear me? Like, yes, they really say that. But if you land on there and there's a big dip and you have no coins, but you have a star, they will take the star away from you. Yeah, what a devastating thing to happen to you just because you landed on the space wrong. But yeah, next up is some deeper waters that will be pretty interesting in the middle.